Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a hill shade or a shaded relief image in QGIS 3.10. Um, so in the first part of the video we'll, we'll spend a few minutes talking about what is a hill shade and then, uh, then I'll show you how to make one using the hill shade tool in QGIS. If you just want to cut straight to the QGIS, uh, jump to the second half of the video. So uh, what is a shaded relief image? It's essentially uh, built on a digital elevation model. So you start with a, a grid of pixels where each pixel is an elevation value. And then you apply a simulated uh, sunlight to it such that you generate a new raster with shadows. Um, areas of dark and light that show the, the texture or the relief on the landscape. And then you can colorize that. So here we have the Adirondacks, Lake Champlain, um, the Green Mountains and there's a tremendous amount we can learn from a shaded relief image. So how does it work? Um, essentially, as I said, we take the software and it simulates light from a given azimuth or, or compass direction and a given sun angle. So here, this image is being illuminated from 315 degrees from the northwest. Um, it is typical to illuminate your image from the, from the top. Um, and the reason is even though the sun is from the south, in the northern hemisphere, when we're at our computer, we're used to seeing uh, lights coming from above, <laughs> from the ceiling. So our mind tends to interpret shadows uh, in that framework. And so, uh, and then you specify a sun angle that would be, you know, relative to the horizontal, right? How steep is the sun? Is it directly overhead or is it setting on the horizon? Because that affects shadows as well. So then, um, during this computation, um, each pixel is assigned a grayscale value between 0 and 255. Um, so low numbers, like 0, correspond to dark areas, okay? And those are areas where the computer has determined there's no sunlight directly hitting that part of the landscape. So for example, um, here we have uh, essentially a, a mesa, or kind of the edge of a platform or shelf, that's being dissected by headward erosion of these rivers. And you can see these are very steep cliffs or slopes along the edge. And those slopes that are both steep and are facing directly away from the sun uh, have almost no solar illumination. And so they've been given very low values. Um, and so they appear very dark in the resulting hill shade image. Uh, in contrast, slopes that are uh, facing directly into the sun, so they're facing to the northwest, um, and they're at the right angle, <laughs> so maybe they're at a complementary angle to your sun angle, and the sun is hitting them uh, perpendicularly. Those are the maximum illuminated slopes, and those have pixel values close to 255, so they appear very bright in the, in the display of the hillshade raster. And believe it or not, it's hard to believe, but that's actually all this picture is, is literally, uh, it's a new raster, a hill shade raster, pixel values zero to 255, um, each pixel assigned a, a, a grayscale value. And just by doing that, you can see this amazing detail of the landscape. Now, if we wanna add color to that, that's actually pretty straightforward. All we have to do is put that new hillshade raster on the bottom and above it bring our, our digital elevation model and uh, assign a color scheme to our digital elevation model. In this example from New Zealand, um, high elevations are white, low elevations are dark green. And we drape that elevation raster over the hillshade and we make it transparent, maybe 60% transparent. So what happens then is the colors come from the elevation values themselves, but the brightness or the tone comes from the underlying hill shade, right? So everything here has a color, but we also still have some dark areas that are, that are in the shadow. And what we're seeing here is the Alpine Fault in New Zealand. And this just underscores how powerful a hill shade raster can be in, in geologic interpretation. So one more important thing uh, is the Z factor. So as the software is making this calculation, right, it's needing to compute a hill slope angle quite often. So we can think of hill slope angle as being rise over run, right? 
And so to do that correctly, the software needs to have rise uh, or, or elevation in the same units as run or you know, uh, x, y map units. And this is a problem if the map you're using is in units of degrees, which is quite common if you're using a geographic coordinate system. Okay, um, So if that is the case, you need to assign what's called a z factor. That is a multiplier that essentially converts your elevation units into the same units as your, your map. So in this case, it would convert elevation in meters into actually degrees. Um, so uh, if you're at a latitude of 40 degrees, you would multiply your elevation values by, you know, 1 times 1.1 times 10 to the negative 6 would convert those roughly into degrees. And it would give you uh, a sensible looking hill shade that looks kind of smooth and nice. If you get one that looks like this, kind of overshadowed, um, it's, it's often a sign that you didn't, you didn't set the z factor correctly and you have too many shadows because you're, you're to, it thinks your topography is super, super steep. Um, now, if, if you are working in a UTM projection, right, um, in that case, your, your map units, your XY units, are already in meters. And so if, if your map units are in meters and your elevation is in meters, which it might or might not be, um, then you don't need to assign a Z factor, or your Z factor is just one if you're already in the same vertical and map units. So don't forget to set your Z factor. Okay, so with that caveat, let's go straight into QGIS. We've been working on a uh, digital elevation model from Mount Shasta in Northern California. So far, we, we merged two files, we clipped them, and we reprojected into a UTM coordinate system. So our map units are actually now in meters. Although just as I say that, I notice actually that uh, in, in my map project, uh, is still displaying in decimal degrees down here. And it says my map project is an unknown coordinate reference system. So I'm actually gonna take a minute and just go in here and make sure to set that to the same projection as my digital elevation model. And that, now you can see my coordinates down here are displaying in meters. So that, that may make things happier going forward. Always good to have your project and your raster in the same coordinate system. All right, so with that said, let's go right to the hillshade. This is very easy and fast. Uh, there's a QGIS tool to do it. Of course, we'll use our DEM as the base. We do not need to change the Z factor because everything is in meters. Our azimuth for the sun will be 300 degrees, so it's coming out of the northwest. Our sun angle will be 40 degrees from the horizontal. And in this case, I'm just gonna save this to a temporary file. So we'll hit run, hope for the best. Okay, so that finished up. Let's have a look. There it is. Um, so we went from just a bunch of elevation values now to an actual hillshade raster. Super cool. We can see uh, the central edifice of Mount Shasta, some lava flows, some peripheral cones. So wow, hillshade is such a powerful tool. We'll zoom in and because this is such a fine scale uh, DEM, actually we're seeing some pretty nice detail in here. Okay, so the final thing we'll do is, is just uh, bring the hill shade down to the bottom. Then we'll right click on the DEM itself, go to properties, symbology, get ourselves some kind of color scale. You can pick, of course, whatever one you want. Um, then we'll hit apply. And then we'll go to transparency, set that to be about 50-60% uh, transparent. And now we have a nice kind of colored hill shade image. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned as we do contours next.